So welcome, um, my name is Sandra McLeod and I'm Chief Officer for Aberdeen City Health and Social Care Partnership. And we wanted to share some reflection today from our recent inspection into adult protection. We're going to hear today from Claire Wilson, our lead for social work, Kenny O'Brien, adult protection lead for NHS and Colin Morrens from Police Scotland. Our vision for adult social care and adult support and protection is the foundation of our work and it runs through every element of our service delivery and right across all our partners. It's a simple vision, as you can see, but the key word being commitment to and protecting adults. Our next slide, thanks. Our approach to the inspection was to have a joint ownership at every level. I think as this slide really clearly sets out, it's about planning together, working together, learning together and delivering together. It was really important to us that we did have joint ownership at all levels across the organisation. But also we had to evidence how we were going to achieve in our outcomes and how we're going to communicate. So what we did was we, we achieved this by moving forward with our joint communication, our joint sessions, and really taking on board the role of each agency within the inspection process and about how each of those were just as important to each other. But for a bit more of the detail and somebody who really was uh, forefront of all this inspection, I'm going to hand over to Claire Wilson. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Um, as Sandra said, my name is Claire Wilson. I'm the lead for adult social work and the lead for public protection for the health and social care partnership here in Aberdeen. The inspection of adult support protection commenced in February this year. It ran February and was concluded in April. Um, it was part of a, um, a two year programme for the care inspected into inspections for um, adult support and protection. And the focus was really on two themes. It was the key processes for adult support and protection and the strategic leadership. The inspection itself had three main elements um, to the methodology. The first part was um, the submission of our evidence, which also contained our position statement. The position statement was written based on a multi-agency self-evaluation, and it was really based on a lot of work that had been undertaken from a comprehensive comprehensive file reading exercise, which gave us a real sense of our operational activity, but it also told us a story and our um, ability to evidence the improvement journey that we had went through in our operations and within our strategic planning and the delivery of our protection in Aberdeen across the, the three agencies. A staff survey was also undertaken and this was sent to all relevant staff across the agencies. So that was um, health and police um, as well as social work. In addition to this, there were staff workshops led by the inspectors and that was for frontline staff who were directly involved in the adult support and protection operations. The final part um, of the inspection was the reading of just over 100 cases um, for those involved in the adult support and protection process. Um, all the social work files were read and then linked health and police files were also read. I think it's fair to say um, that the preparation or any inspection um, takes a fair bit of work and it takes a fair bit of planning. We used the learning and the same approach that we had done for a recent justice inspection. So we approached the inspection with meticulous planning and this was based on a project management approach. The things we put in place were um, single and multi-agency working groups um, were established and they met weekly to plan and coordinate and oversee all the inspection activity. It was important to bring the staff with us um, to allay the concerns that come from an inspection. So we did this by issuing regular multi-agency staff bulletin updates. We held webinars, briefing sessions for staff, and this was single and multi-agency. For social work, we prepared guidance for staff for uploading their files. We also held twice weekly drop-ins for all staff that um, had files involved in the, the preparation um, for the inspection. Each agency had a single point of contact to triage um, any inquiries through the file reading week. And we had really good um, relationships formed with the inspectors and a really open communication and dialogue back and forth to mitigate anything that arose throughout our um, whole inspe inspection journey. The final part was, um, was the inspectors held a session with leaders um, from social work, um, council, police and health. And this was really to look at our strategic planning and the oversight and governance of adult support protection in Aberdeen. 
The inspection report was published on the 21st of June and it was an overall positive report for us and it really highlighted the journey that we had been on over the past few years. Um, in the next slide, um, sorry, next slide, Val. The main findings from the inspection, Kenny will go into more detail about this um, when I hand over to him. Um, but really going back to the main focus of the inspection was the key processes and the strategic leadership. So that was the, the, the foundation of what the inspection was focusing on. So they did find that our key processes were effective. And yes, we did have some areas of improvement, but our strengths really outweighed um, and we showed the good um, outcomes that we had for individuals in Aberdeen who were at risk of harm. They found that our strategic leadership was very effective and they saw major strengths in our planning, oversight and governance arrangements for adult protection in the city. Through our vision for public protection in Aberdeen, we have en enabled the creation of that locality ownership that Angela spoke about through our locality planning, the multi-agency and multidisciplinary collaboration and system-wide working that we was able to evidence in its two sense. So from the overall being to have all services working together to protect, promote and ensuring that human rights based approach in our communities and keeping people safe from harm. The strategic journey we have been on is embedding our vision that Sanja highlighted to you. And we, of course, will continue to lead on our continuous improvement of services, adapting to needs, demand and working partner and system wide to improve outcomes for people. I'll pass you on to Kenny, who will go through um, some more detail of the, the positives and some of the findings um, that we have to work on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, my name is Kenny O'Brien. I am the Adult Public Protection Lead for NHS Grampian. And as Claire was mentioning, it was a very positive overall inspection for Aberdeen City and for the multi-agency partners. Now, as with any inspection, there are always some areas which they're looking for us to develop further in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through some of those areas for development and for improvement, but then also really go into a little bit more depth about the key strengths that they found as well uh, across our multi-agency partnership. I suppose the first thing that I would say, which was probably quite reassuring for all of us, was that all these areas for improvement that have been identified, the, the good news about them is that we had already identified them as multi-agency partners before the inspectors had even come into Aberdeen. So we were already actively working on them and trying to develop and kind of make improvements and uh, support all of our partners in regards to them, even before the inspection itself. The inspectors did pick out a few key things. One of the things they talked about was the chronologies, that is the kind of a kind of description of the life events of an individual and also the protection planning, how we codify and capture the uh, arrangements we're putting in place to make someone safe. We do have very well designed tools and templates for that, but what the inspectors wanted to see was a bit more consistency in the application and use of them. In addition, um, we need to do a bit more work in relation to the length of time taken to complete adult protection investigations and call case conferences. Now, the inspectors were very clear that we were keeping people safe. It was more just bringing all these processes to conclusion in good time as an area we still want to focus on. Um, within NHS Grampian, we know that there's a requirement for us to do a bit more work in relation to our recording of adult protection matters. And that's actually a national issue that's being taken up nationally as well across the health boards across all of Scotland, but NHS Grampian is also taking that very seriously. There is a need for us to push more in relation to getting our adults at risk, getting more access to independent advocacy, because access to advocacy has such great benefits that was observed by the inspectors for those individuals who did have it. And then we need to do probably a little bit more in relation to our evaluation on a multi-agency basis, making sure that what we're doing in relation to public protection and in particular adult support and protection is more regularly evaluated by all the partners involved and that we also make sure that we involve you, our staff, in those changes and improvement works. And next slide, please. But with those areas for improvement, which are good things for us to target and to focus on as multi-agency partners, there were also really quite significant strengths that they wanted to highlight as part of the inspection process. So for example, 
the key work that's been done within the Health and Social Care Partnership and the local authority in relation to its new adult protection social work team, bringing together both its social work duty team and also other practitioners from other areas of social work to really do very effective collaborative screening and initial referral discussion work for adult protection. That was commended by the inspectors. The other thing which was very heartening, I think, for all the partners from police, from social work to health and beyond, was very much the inspectors' recognition from their file reading that we do communicate and do very good information sharing at all stages of adult protection work. They were very happy with that and we actually were seen as really doing an exceptionally good job there. They were also really quite impressed with our commitment to both joint learning and development. So one example of that is the really quite substantial work that's been done in relation to self-neglect and hoarding on a multi-agency basis, with both multi-agency events and kind of resources being distributed across all of the agencies. Um, and we're continuing to work and develop on that now on an ongoing basis. Um, as Claire mentioned briefly before about strategic leadership, the vision overall for adult protection across Aberdeen, across all the partners, was really felt to be quite strong and embedded and that the culture was positive in relation to how we try and move things forward and make things better in relation to adult support and protection. And then also in regards to how we engage with adults who have a lived experience of adult support and protection. They were very impressed with the work we've been doing in relation to gathering feedback from those individuals who have uh, had experience of the adult protection system, including our user forum, where we actually have individuals who have actually encountered adult protection activity and procedures, and they then advise us on elements of strategy, on elements of policy, and then elements of operational practice. So I think probably the key message that we want to say more than anything else is that there are certainly areas for development as there are always with any inspection process, but there were really significant strengths as well and that they should be celebrated. And now I'm going to hand over to Colin. Thank you very much, Kenny. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Colin Morans. I'm a detective superintendent in Northeast Division with responsibility for uh, the lead in public protection. Um, I've got to confess I've somewhat lucked out in respect of Division of Labour for this particular uh, presentation, having, uh, having the last slide to sort of go over and summarise, but it falls on me to summarise our approach to the challenges these type of inspections generally bring. Um, clearly ownership, logistics, communication and resource are all key elements to it, but we are, we are strong in the North East across the partnerships um, and by focusing on planning together and working together, etc., as laid out in the slide four, um, as Sanders already discussed through, um, we, we, we have delivered an effective response to the inspection. And this work will continue in respect of strengthening our strong ASP services in Aberdeen. I think uh, ultimately, in short, um, our approach to the inspection and, and, and moving forward works and it will be considered for any other inspections that land on our doorstep. Um, uh, next slide, please, Val. Um, and I'll just open it up at this point to any questions for the presentation team, please. Colin, I'm, I'm not seeing any hands come up from colleagues. We do have time if anybody does want to raise anything on the inspection findings. I guess there's instinctively an uncomfortableness, isn't there, as Scottish people accepting praise and, and thanks. And um, I got a bit of advice recently from somebody who said you should just say thank you um internally when when people are giving you your praise but but thank you colleagues for sharing the positive inspection and i think it's a reflection on everybody that's on the call all the hard work that that does does go in so so dwell on just receiving the the, the thanks and the praise from uh, from the care inspector and from from cock um i think i've filled the space calling now i'm now seeing some hands coming up so could we go to simon and then fiona and then take graham simon rayner first really good work everybody involved um what do you think we should all learn in terms of running successful inspections who wants to take that 
Penny, do you want to go first? <laughs> OK, um, I suppose what I would say is it's about having the right people at the right level who can basically project manage it effectively um, and then making sure that within each or if it's a multi-agency inspection then making sure that each organization wraps around that person to ensure that the the right support is there so that they're not left on their own dealing with it and i would say certainly that that seemed to work very well in this case where there were named people who led for each of the agencies to make sure it all tied together and then beyond that each organization then wrapped around that person behind them to make sure the resources are there and then probably the only final thing i'll say is make sure you've got a vow as well because I, I i i think as as a multi-agency partner who was actively involved in it, i don't think i can overstate the support that val did overall coordinating it on behalf of the wider organizations it, it was exceptional in that regard great Kenny, thank you for for calling out Val's contribution. That is that is important. Claire, do you want to come in and then Colin? I'll come to you and then Sandra. Yeah, and and I suppose it's really just to echo what Kenny said. But I also think yeah, the preparation is key. But I think it's also really important, and and we've learned this from our our previous inspections. Is and this is where we want to get to that we're always inspection ready that the work is done even before you get that formal notification, that you're ensuring that your evidence is there, that you're able to show that outcome. So it's about early prep and we, and we did, we have done improvement work over the last few years. Um, so we were in a, a, a good position and we started our self-evaluation really early because we knew the inspection was coming. We didn't know when it was coming, but so the preparation and early preparation is key. and. I suppose just to reiterate, it's a project management. So having really clear time scales, time scales, Gantt charts, which I'm not, I can't do, but Val can do them. So that, so really um, using that project management element, um, and um, that's all to add. Really, I'll let others come in. Thanks, Claire. Colin. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, for me, um, just to echo some of the comments, for me, it's about ownership, ownership across the partnership and ownership within each individual organisation that's involved and then supporting that with um, the coordination role, the project management role, as Claire says, um, alongside that. But um, it is a, it's quite a, a, a cumbersome um, process when you're trying to prepare for inspections and, and we just need some one somewhere to get a grip of it within each organisation and across the partnership, and then the coordination piece to support. That would be my comment on it all. Thanks, Colin. Sandra, anything you want to add? Colleagues have said? Um, not really. I think everyone's covered. The only thing I would add is that um, I think there was a genuine commitment from every single part of the, take, the whole of COG and the whole of the team and everybody around about this to make sure that we delivered well on the inspection. So. I think it's just that commitment, but nothing else to add really, Angela. Thanks. Thanks, Sandra. Simon, thank you for the question. I'm going to go to Fiona next and then I'll go to Sandy and then Graham. Fiona? Yeah, thank you. Um, um, I suppose I'm actually almost adding into answering a part of uh, Simon's question unconsciously, um, which was actually to uh, do the un-Scottish thing, which is to offer another compliment. Um, I found that the um, the energy um, that was behind the team uh, was really, really positive and brought, it was very clear what the ask was and with very clear timelines. And, and I think for, you know, Kenny was actually probably the, the figurehead that I saw, but I know that there was a team behind and alongside him as well. But uh, initially when we were looking at what we, we didn't know what the inspection may bring, but we were looking at it. It looked overwhelming, but it was broken down. It was clear. Um, and uh, I think, you know, it, it felt that we were making milestones all the way through the process in preparation for the inspection. So I would say that that's been really welcomed by myself to see that in operation. I thank you. So I hope I hope Roman was expecting me to speak there <laughs> in response to that. 
I wasn't trying to embarrass you, I think, but it's a genuine highlight of uh, in regard to what made the inspection go well. I, I think it's worth, worth highlighting that uh, you brought a lot of people alongside you. I'm going to just turn my camera off now. <laughs> Kenny, just need to say thank you. Fiona, thank you. That's that's lovely for Kenny to, to hear and happy to underscore your your compliments to, to Kenny and the full the full team. Can I go to Sandy next then? Hi, thank you. Um I think I think my question is more kind of um around what is the secret. I uh, think just about every sort of you know review I've read over the years since my study in days, communication has always been cited as something that needs to be improved. So what what was the communication plan and what's made that work so well? I'll come I'll come in, Angela. <clears throat> Sorry. Um do you mean the communication plan in terms of the inspection? Between I, I guess I guess the communication between agencies, it kind of always seems to be something that is is cited that we could get better on, I guess, as as support services. So something's mm -hmm. obviously worked really well here. So what what's the secret to it? The, <laughs> I, I wish I, I'll bottle it, but no, the, the secret is um there is no secret. We we work and it is goes back to the, um, what I said about that really close collaboration, joint working and the shared vision, I think is is key. If if everybody is has got that shared vision and that same commitment, so it goes back to our vision, um, we have a very um um robust um membership in the adult protection committee the same as as the cog the chief officers group so we have very clear vision we have very clear strategies in place of how we work together to achieve that goals so when the inspection came there was already that kind of foundation there of that joint ownership and it goes back to the ownership that that colin said if everybody is is owning that they're, they're they've got the same vision they're looking for the positive outcomes from an inspection and an inspection is a, a lot of work as people will know but by working together to achieve that goal and that showed through our, our self-valuation it through it showed through the weekly meetings we had and the oversight we had of it and as everybody said everybody was on board they took ownership <clears throat> from the top leaders right down to the frontline staff and that's why it was important to bring staff along with us and really communicate um, how we were um, approaching the inspection, what the inspection meant, that our, what was we found in our self-evaluation from the file reading. So people were, um, we gave them that information all the way through, which I think made such a difference. Thanks, Claire. Colin, did you want to come in on that one too? Yeah, thank you. It was just really to add to that, um, in respect of communication in and about the, the uh, the inspection team. I think it's it's worth note, noting that yes, there was a clear vision there, as Claire said. Said um, we do have existing very strong relationships within the adult support protection environment um, locally. So um, we, you know, these are relationships that we you know were able to challenge each other professionally, um, have difficult conversations, and and motivate each other along the way. So I think in answer to the question in respect of the inspection team communication, we have existing strong relationships locally. Um, and we work hard to build on those day, day in, day out. And as Claire says, we're inspection ready when the, when the need arises. So it was just to add that into the conversation. Right, thanks, Colin. Um, Sandy, thank you for the question. Graham, your has gone down. Did, did you want to come in? Graham Simpson, I think you had your hand up before. Thanks, Angela. Just to recognise as well that we took the adult protection report to the Child Protection Committee this morning. And just to leave to recognise that actually there's learning that I think we can all take from this inspection as well. And I think that as we move increasingly towards a right based approach or embedding a right based approach around that, how we ensure advocacy for for, for those who are subject to adult protection processes, as well as to children and their families going through child protection processes, is something I think we can learn together going forward. And so I think we, how we do that is, is something I think is important that we recognise going forward.